Hello everybody, it is once again I, Sir Bidian, bringing you a fresh dose of the C-Sharp hype train. Today, we're going to get stuck right into it with some more missile updates. Following changes have been made to missiles in C-Sharp Aurora. Number one, missile armor has been removed. You can no longer armor missiles. That's going to hurt. On the other hand, that is going to make point defense more effective because now you can't negate half their uh, point defenses with just sticking a, a little bit of armor on your missile. Number two, laser warheads have been removed. Now, they may be added back in at some point in the future, but for now, they have been removed. This, of course, means that missiles can no longer functionally completely bypass point defenses. Number three, ECM is now a fixed 0.25 MSP for missiles. Uh, the missile ECM techline has been removed, and if a missile is equipped with ECM, it will have the same ECM capability as the current racial ECM technology. The missile design will maintain that ECM capability and will not be upgraded if the racial tech improves. For each level of ECM, the missile will be 10% harder to hit with energy weapons and will reduce the lock of missile fire controls by 10%. This can be negated by linking a similar level of ECCM to the point defense fire controls. So basically, the, the two biggest differences are that there's no missile ECM separate tech line. Uh, it just uses the base ECM and that ECM is basically a quarter of the size. So you can't get partial ECM like you could by you running less than one uh, MSP worth of ECM, but you don't have to spend one MSP worth of ECM to get the full bonus. So overall, that makes ECM for missiles a lot more viable, in my opinion. And the effect it has is functionally identical uh, compared to uh, VB6. Number four, missiles can be equipped with ECCM. That's new, which is a fixed 0.25 MSP. The missile ECCM level will be equal to the current racial ECCM tech. In c -Sharp Aurora, the ECCM of missile fire controls will only affect the range at which the fire control can lock on. The ECCM of the missile itself will affect the chance of the missile striking its target if the target has active ECM. Now, the corollary to that is that ship ECM now matters against missile more than just uh reducing the range at which their fire controls can lock on um i believe we're gonna we're gonna cover it in a later in a future post but um missiles now need to counter ship ecm with their own onboard eccm um, you can't just stick an eccm onto your ship or oversize your missile fire control and fire the, you know, the missile at the enemy without a care in the world as to whether they actually have ECM. If they have ECM on their ship, your missiles are going to be less, less accurate. Conversely, again, there is now even more reason to have effective ECM on all your warships, even if they're not meant to go anywhere near enemy point defenses or main guns for that matter number five any missile sensor active thermal em or geo has to be a minimum of 0 0.25 msp or it will have no effect no more 0 0.1 missile sensors on to just redirect in the immediate area um, so that is going to mean that missiles that can redirect on their own well a will have larger sensors but b they're going to be a lot bigger. You're going to have to really sacrifice the 0.25 MSP. You can't just have a teeny tiny sensor like most people mount for redirection. Number six, missile series have been removed. Instead, there will be more detailed class loadout options. I like this plan because in VB6, the only time you can add a missile to a series is when you initially design it. And if you don't, there's no way to fix that without redesigning the entire missile. Um, series were extremely useful so that you don't have to alter the loadout on every single missile ship that uses that particular class of missile. Um, you can just build the missile and then the ship will just load that particular load the new missile once it runs out of the old. 
I like the more detailed class letter options as well because that gives you more flexibility and control about what you actually put in your missile ships. So I really like this change uh, that there you get more control over your loadout without having to rely on series. These changes will make electronic warfare much more important for missile combat. Missiles with ECM will become harder to shoot down and missiles without ECCM will have a reduced chance to hit targets equipped with ECM. Anti-missile missiles will either be less effective or larger versus ECM protected missiles. That's actually another point. If you put ECM on your anti on your uh, main missiles so that they can bypass point defenses, that will also help them evade anti-missile missiles. So it reduces the effectiveness of anti-missile missiles as well. Um, while anti-ship missiles are likely to increase in size and therefore reduce salvo sizes, which is a problem. Salvo sizes are something that is very strong against point defenses. There's also further changes down the road that we will cover that help against multiple servers, but we'll, we'll cover that later. Uh, large volleys of size one missiles will be less effective in a heavy e-war environment and no longer have a huge advantage in launching speed due to the missile launcher changes because now larger missiles don't have the massive launcher penalties, um, the fire rate penalties. So all in all, I believe that this this change does significantly improve missile combat overall, uh, except maybe the missile armor being removed. Further changes to missiles are in line with their thermal detection. Now, not missiles detecting other things, but missiles themselves being detected. In VB6, thermal detection of missiles is based on the following formula. Missile size divided by 20 times speed divided by 1000. Um, now, Steve has no idea why they were coded like that based on size, uh, but yeah. For Sea Sharp Aurora, missiles will use the same formula as ships for thermal signature. Max engine output times current speed over max speed times thermal reduction. As missiles for now anyway don't have thermal reduction or an option to travel below maximum speed, the thermal signature is equal to the power of their engines. Combined with the changes to passive detection, this means that missiles in Sea Sharp Aurora will probably be detected by thermal sensors at much greater distances than in VB6. Uh, but yeah, missile size having an effect on thermal signatures, yeah, I'm sure it did make sense that in the, at the time, but... Mm probably not really anymore. Uh, now, we also have some changes to turrets. A very minor update, but a very, very important one. The benefits of multiple energy weapons in turrets have been doubled. A twin turret now has a 20% reduction in crew versus two solo weapons and has a 10% reduction in gear size. A quad turret has a 40% reduction in crew versus four solo weapons and has a 20% reduction in gear size. That is pretty significant savings for massed weapons. I am very pleased with that. In addition, an error in the VB6 code for turret design meant that a turret needed four times more armor than a ship of equivalent size. This has been corrected for Sea Sharp Aurora, which means armored turrets are now much more viable. Now, he says much more viable, I say actually viable. So, uh, yeah. While we're on the subject of turrets and guns, in VB6, if a power plant is damaged, it slows down the recharge rate of all weapons by a proportionate amount. In C Sharp Aurora, power is allocated weapon by weapon until the available power is exhausted. This means that some weapons may not be recharged, but the others will be recharged at the maximum rate. Weapons are charged in order of ascending power requirement. Once a weapon is recharged, it will require no more power and other weapons can begin the recharge process. This should allocate power in the most effective way to keep a ship in the fight. Um, now, personally, I would actually very much prefer that we get a choice between ascending or descending power requirement or potentially be able to prioritize weapon allocate, uh, power allocation for weapons. So, for example... Uh, if you're up against something very heavily armored, I don't really care about recharging the 10, 10 centimeter lasers that I've got that are mainly for point defense. I want to recharge the 40 centimeter laser that actually has a chance of punching through its armor and dealing some damage. Whereas if the fighters come along, I don't care about that 40 centimeter laser anymore because it's not going to do shit. I want my 10 centimeter guns. So... 
Steve, if you're listening, please let us choose or at least prioritize power recharge for weapons. Now, that said, uh, it's, it's, it's also a very interesting point because now it does something interesting. So in VB6, if you, ha if you underpower your ship, it just slows everything down and it just spreads your alpha strikes apart. In C sharp, with this particular change, it's good because you can effectively still spread you still spread out your alpha strike essentially, but it gives you that option of really hammering out just a couple of lasers at a time and preserving that alpha strike for the initial blow. Um, so it, it opens up some very interesting power strategies if you're really trying to scrape every single last ton um, out of your uh, vessel. Now, we have two changes that are going to make a lot of people oh so happy. I know, it makes me very happy. First up, we have commercial hangars. Commercial hangars are available. They are 50% larger than military hangar bays. And they have the same cost of 100 build points and the same crew requirement. They are intended for transport of other commercial vessels, temporary transport of military vessels, reloading of box launchers, and for repairing ships. With this in mind, a military ship still has normal maintenance requirements while in a civilian hangar. However, as you can maintain ships in deep space in Sea Sharp Aurora, it will be possible to build a large ship that could provide both commercial hangar space and maintenance, or combine ships with commercial hangars and ships with maintenance modules to provide a logistics hub. It also means that you can mount these things and have this maintenance hub be commercial to avoid maintenance on itself. And that is a huge deal. Now, you still have to pay maintenance for your military ships in the hangar, unlike in VB6, where ships in hangars um, not only rewind their clock, but they get maintained for free. Um, and of course, they are 50% larger, which means that any ship that is that has a decent amount of commercial hangar space is going to be huge. But the fact that they exist in the first place is absolutely awesome. Right alongside commercial magazines. Two versions, one with 100 capacity and one with 500 capacity. So it doesn't look like they're designable. They are preset. In general terms, they are cheaper but less efficient in terms of space than military magazines. Also, they have a 100% explosion chance if hit. So uh, probably not a good idea to apply for a job on them, huh? Commercial magazines and commercial magazines bigger. That probably should have a different name for it. Um, you can see here stats, 100, 500, size 12, size 50. Now, uh, that means that the 500 capacity magazine is more space efficient, really. Yeah, it's more space efficient. It's more crew efficient. It's more cost efficient. It well it has the same hit to kill. So, yeah, you don't want it to get shot at all. Um, and with 100% explosion chance, you really don't want it to get shot. So even if you armor the ships, one of the magazines could still explode due to shock damage, as the magazines are fairly large at size 12 and 50. If they hit, and the ship is probably gone. So it would be a bad idea to take a commercial ammunition transport along with a battle fleet. However, now you don't have to have military, military uh, ammunition transports shuttling ammunition to your front lines where you have to pay maintenance and maintain them and overhaul them and all that BS. Ha having these commercial ammunition transports means that you have a maintenance-free ma method of transporting ammunition to the front lines. And with the changes in missiles, where missiles are, quite frankly, much less effective overall, especially with the changes we've covered and the changes we have yet to cover, um, it's a very big deal that your logistics supplies, that your logistics chain for your ammunition is robust and you do get those savings as much as you possibly can. And with commercial hangars and commercial magazines, that is gonna play a very big role in that. And of course, we have a lot more changes coming up uh, in terms of uh, logistics to talk about, but that will be for tomorrow. Now, quick announcement before I sign off. Uh, Steve is most definitely aware of the hype train 
because I saw the post, he has been notified. Um, but he has, we did mention earlier today that uh, he does intend to go over the changes list. And we are at the moment talking about changes back from 2017, 2018. So they are pretty old changes and some have been superseded. And I'm sure that he's rebalanced and modified some um, of these changes that we've talked about so far uh, since then. So just bear in mind that all the changes that we talk about in this particular series are subject to change, may not be final numbers, and could very well just turn out to be wrong. Uh, we will, of course, discover them, uh, assuming that Steve doesn't go back and cover all the changes that he's made to the changes when the game comes out. But until then, join me on the official Discord channel, Reddit, or the forums, where you can join the discussion and the hype, or simply hang around here every day this month until launch. For I will see you next time.